Now for those of you who've been watching me garden for a while and hear me talk about stung up peas and have no idea what I'm talking about, now I can show you. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having an awesome day. It's a relatively cool day here on the homestead. When I say relatively, I mean it's not as hot as it could be. Feels pretty good out here today compared to what we've been having. Still dry as it can be. This week looks good for us. We got about a 60% chance every day this week. We usually shoot these videos about a week in advance of when they actually air. So by the time this video airs, hopefully we will have had a lot of rain. Keep our fingers crossed for that. So right now in our gardens, we're kind of in a transition phase from spring or early summer crops into summer gardening and summer gardening down here there's not a whole lot of vegetables we can grow so we transition this time of year from vegetables to cover crops not in all of our plots but in a good many of them and that's what we'll be doing over the next month or so we'll be working on that transition and it won't be too long before we'll start thinking about what we're going to be planting for fall so on today's video we got to work on this sweet corn plot here where it's all been harvested Got to do a little bit of cleanup here and get it ready so we can pull up that drip tape. As I told you on the last video, this is where we're going to try to grow some, I guess you call it late summer or fall watermelons. Then I want to show you our peanuts. I may need to do a little healing on those. And then I also want to show you some bad news on our zipper peas. So our sweet corn here is done. Like I told you on that last video, we got about 35 quart bags of corn in the freezer, which I was very happy with off this little 20 by 60 plot here. And we need to get this stuff down. We need to get it chopped up. We got to get this cleaned up. Got a lot of work to do before we can put any watermelon transplants in the ground here. Got to be a little bit careful because we do have drip tape underneath those corn rows there so got to be a little bit careful with that i don't want that getting twisted up in the mower and i'd like to try not to chop it so we could save those lines for the watermelons we'll be planting here next got a little bit of a jungle right here at the beginning of the row where our main line is and our filter is so we don't want to run over that got to be a little bit careful with that but I think we can get it chopped down with the mower pretty good and then we can work on getting that drip tape up. Now with most everything we grow, pulling up the drip tape that's buried underneath the plants is pretty easy. We just kind of yank it up and it comes right up, especially if we let the drip run for an hour or two, get the soil nice and moist. It's usually really easy to pull up. Corn is kind of the exception to that, but there are a few tricks I've learned over the years. It's a lot easier to pull up the tape on green corn as opposed to corn that has dried. Now some of this, because it's so dry out here, has started drying. Probably should have did this a few days ago, but if we mow it down green, we got a lot better chance of being able to just yank that tape up as opposed to having to kind of dig it a little bit with a shovel. So my plan here is to chop this down with my zero turn mower as good as I can. I don't have a tractor or a brush hog or anything like that. So we're going to chop it down with a zero turn and then either tonight or tomorrow I'm going to let that drip run for quite a while, moisten up that soil really good and that should make it pretty easy to rip up that tape. So let me go grab the mower and we'll see how good we can chop this up. I think I'm going to leave the baffle down on the mower so I can kind of chop and drop and almost mulch these corn stalks as opposed to just blowing them all over the place. All right, so the old Gravely didn't completely obliterate all of it, but it didn't do too bad. Still got a few stalks in there. It just kind of got leaned over, didn't get chopped up, but it did chop up a good bit of it. So now what we need to do is get this tape up. We're not going to fool with this today, but I'll show you. So I tried to pull up some just a minute ago, tried to grab this piece right here, and it pulled up a little bit, but then it kind of got stuck right there. And if you pull on it too hard, this tape will stretch and kind of tear and we don't want to do that because we want to try to save these pieces of tape here so now we need to turn on this tape let it run for a while and if we soak this ground here good get it nice and moist those corn roots won't have near as much 
of a hold there and we can usually pull up that tape and kind of flip up those corn roots as we go. And then once we get the tape up, I'll rake the plot clean, wheel hold it a couple times. I don't want to till these weeds that are out there. I don't want to till those into the soil and just increase my weed seed bank. So we'll wheel hold it a few times, get rid of those weeds out there. And I'd say in probably a week or so, we should have this ready to plant watermelons in. And I just thought of something. So while we're in the mowing spirit, might as well knock down this cover crop here. This stuff, especially on that end over there, is getting pretty tall and up four and a half foot tall or so, and it's getting tough to pull my chicken tractor through there. So let me go get back on the mower real quick. We'll knock this down, and I'll talk a little bit more about the regrowth on this sorghum sedan grass here. All right, so we got that cut pretty good on our mower's highest setting. Got a lot of good organic material there, chopped and dropped and put on top of that no-till plot. And it may not look like it now, but this stuff will grow back. So when growing sorghum sedan grass as a cover crop, there's kind of two strategies you can employ. You can do the chop and drop strategy, which is kind of what we did here, or you can let it grow out as tall as it'll grow, usually six or seven feet, sometimes taller, till it starts going to seed. Take a big mower in there, like a tractor mower, chop it all down, then till it into the soil. With this chop and drop strategy, what we do is we basically let it grow up a little bit, we come in, mow it on our mower's high setting, it'll grow back, and we can usually mow it three or four times before it actually starts going to seed, and we need to terminate it. With the other strategy, you need a little bigger equipment to be able to knock down that six, seven foot tall sorghum and to till that much green material into the soil. My little walk behind tiller won't till that much green material into the soil. It'll just kind of choke up. But if you got a tiller behind a tractor, that would be a good option if you're going to do that strategy and let it get as tall as it'll get. All right, so we got a little sidetrack there with that sorghum sedan grass. Now let's get back on our scheduled strategy for today and talk about these peanuts here behind me. Now in this plot, which is not on drip irrigation, and this is my sandiest plot of all 10 or 11 that we have, so it doesn't hold water very well, we are struggling to keep things happy in this drought. You can see my okra plants there look mighty pitiful. Our peas over there, which we'll talk more about in a minute, look okay, and the peanuts actually look okay here so these are our virginia jumbo peanuts and they have filled in really really good considering they didn't germinate that great we got a pretty full looking row there we did plant a double row of these and everything has filled in the gaps pretty well so far now since this is our first year growing peanuts we're kind of just learning as we go one thing that i learned was that early weed control on these is really, really important and it takes a little manual labor to be able to do it. So we grow a lot of things on double rows. Most things that we grow on double rows, they fill in the gap pretty quick. So you don't have to worry about a lot of weed issues. These peanuts took a little while to kind of fill in the gap in the middle of the double row there. So I had to come out here and hand pull quite a few weeds, not every day, but maybe once a week, come out here, hand pull some pig weed, some other stuff that was growing up in there until we got that kind of full coverage along the row. Now of course the commercial guys spray theirs. We're not doing that here so it did require you know hand pulling the weeds. We couldn't get in there and cultivate with a hoe without tearing up the peanut plants. We couldn't wheel hoe it so we just had to pull them by hand but on a 40 foot row it's really not that bad. And as you can see here now taking the time to hand pull those weeds early has left us with a nice clean flush looking double row of peanuts here so that early work has paid off now and we don't really have any weeds in there and there's really not any weeds that are going to come up and thrive in that jungle that's there now we just had to manage it early on now one more thing that i did do with these I don't know if you can tell from this angle is that I healed them. So I took a rake and pulled some dirt up around both sides of that double row. Now, as far as the healing goes, I don't know if that's something you're supposed to do. 
but it just seemed like a good idea. A lot of the other root crops we go benefit from healing, so I said, why not heal these peanuts here? The commercial guys around here seem to plant them on kind of an elevated bed. Now we planted ours on the flat, so I figured it couldn't hurt anything pull a little soil around those plants and in doing that they did help kind of get the foliage from the two sides of the double row connected and close to one another so it does shade out that middle and help with the weed control so we've got that one row of virginia jumbo peanuts and then we've also got this row of valencia peanuts here which is on the edge of this plot where we've got some soybeans coming up there as a cover crop now this row right here has been really liking getting all that water that I've been using to get them soybeans up. So it's looking pretty good now along most of the row. But if we scoot down here, we can see we got a couple gaps in here, one or two little spots where the plants just look terrible. And I don't know what is going on here. So really good looking plants there, or at least what I think good looking peanut plants should look like. And then just pitiful looking plants right there. So if any of you out there are peanut experts and can help me diagnose that and understand why it's happening just here and not along the entire row please do share with me in the comments below now we did have to do a good bit of hand weeding here as well until the gaps in that double row kind of filled in where these plants are looking pitiful right here and it's not filling in those gaps you can see we got some weeds there some purslin and some other stuff we need to get out of there but where the plants are healthy we're benefiting from that shading of that foliage there and we really don't have to worry about weeds at this point now because these were planted several weeks after those virginia jumbos i haven't healed these valencia peanuts yet but we're about to because like i said just seems like a good idea just seems like the right thing to do so i'm going to go grab the wheel hoe cultivate each side of this double row get us a little bit of soil kind of stirred up there get my rake and we're going to heal them up nicely all right all right all right we got them healed up there now is that worth doing does it make a difference i don't know you tell me maybe it does maybe it doesn't maybe i just like healing stuff whether it needs it or not and if that's the case i can live with that and now back to this super sandy plot here and our zipper peas so we have two 40 foot double rows of zipper peas planted and some of these are looking like they're ready to harvest. Now, if you've never grown zipper peas before, these are not like purple hole field peas. We don't wait on the shells to turn purple before we harvest them. We want to wait until the shells turn kind of that pale yellow color there. Those two right there are prime ready to harvest. Now, if we leave them on here too long, like I did with these two here, it's a little too late those are a little too brown i don't know that those would be any good they might be a little too dry to pick fresh but that is what we're looking for there so unlike those top pick purple hole pink eye peas we grew last year these are a little more aggravating to harvest with the top pick variety they're all kind of ready at the same time you get one big picking off of them all the pods are kind of sitting right up top on the plants there they're easy to go through there do one mass picking and they're pretty much done with these we got to go through here every couple days or so pick these shell them and so we don't get to just harvest them all at one time put them all up at one time it's a little more aggravating but these are mighty tasty so they're worth it now i told you all about this when we planted these and as they've been growing but we have to spray these with the bad stuff the liquid seven because we have a pest around here called the pea curculio that can really do some damage gnawing on those pea pods so these have been sprayed probably five times since they've been planted and we were hoping that would significantly reduce any pest damage that we had on these but as old forrest gump said sometimes they just ain't enough rocks now for those of you who've been watching me garden for a while and hear me talk about stung up peas and have no idea what i'm talking about now i can show you see that right there the camera focus in on it that 
is a stung up pea. All those little black dots you see there are from that pea weevil piercing into that shell and eating on my peas. And if we open up the pod, we can really see the damage there. See all those little dots on those peas? That's from where they've been stung up. Now, thankfully, that's not the case with every single pod out here. We've got some, like these two here. This one doesn't have a single bite mark on it. This one here just has a few, so we can probably salvage most of the peas out of this pod. So pretty much all we were able to do was just kind of minimize the damage a little bit. Now, if we wouldn't use Liquid 7 and we just use organic methods, we would have had a lot of pods that were just past the point of no return, just not salvageable. So we did do ourselves a little bit of a favor, and I don't know if we're going to have a whole lot to freeze. We might just have enough to make a couple fresh messes of these. So it's a little disappointing. I was really wanting to fill the freezer with these, and it's going to be a little aggravating to shell these because there's going to be some pods like this one where we open them up, and some of the peas inside look good, and some of them don't look good. So we have to kind of cull them as we shell them, but we'll see what we get. And I still don't really understand why these zipper peas are so much more vulnerable to that weevil damage than other types of field peas. Last year with the pink eye purple holes, hardly no sting damage at all. We did the same kind of spray program on them, grew them the same time of year, just had a lot more weevil damage on these. I don't know if it's because the shells are a little more thin than those purple hole peas and maybe they can pierce into there easier. Maybe these peas, just taste better to the weevils, just like they taste better to us. And they just like them more. I have no idea. And I've seen several of our viewers comment and say that they wait and grow zipper peas in the fall, that they have less weevil damage in the fall. The last time I tried to grow them in the fall, the weevil damage was really, really bad. So that didn't ring true the last time I tried it, but we may give it another try this fall. I may try to just clear out a whole plot and almost plant these things like a cover crop out there. That way, if something happens to them, I can at least turn the chickens loose in there and we haven't really lost a whole lot. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to let me know if you know what's wrong with those few plants along that peanut row there. And if you're growing field peas and have dealt with any weevil damage this year, I feel sorry for you. I know what it's like. But let me know in the comments below how your weevil pressure has been going. Are you seeing a lot of stung up peas or is everything looking pretty nice and clean? If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Even got some coupon codes for some of those companies so you can take advantage of those discounts. Don't forget to go check out our website, LazyDogFarm.com, where we've got hats, shirts, recipes, our garden blog, recommended products, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.